Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Over the last month or so, I've had a few close family and friends say they want a new car. They say, they want a new car and we're seriously thinking about getting a full electric one. Uh, and of course, they've come to me and said, what would you recommend we get? And what would you get in our situation? Uh, so it kind of got me thinking really, if I didn't have the leaf, if I didn't have a reservation for anything, if I was completely new to the EV market, what would I get? if I wanted a full electric car in 2019. And then after a bit of digging and looking around, it kind of dawned on me really, it won't be any of them. Right, now let me clarify a few things first. I'm on about cars that you can actually get hold of in 2019 in the UK. Not cars you can get a reservation down on, not cars that you like the look of, cars that you can actually order and get hold of in this calendar year, in the next nine months, 2019 in the UK. I'm also on about the more affordable end of the EV spectrum. So the typical, you know, something like this Leaf, basically. Not your Tesla Model X or S's or I-Paces or the Audi Turd, none of that, just the normal kind of I won't say cheaper end, but you know, the more reasonably priced end of the EV market. EVs are in a bit of a lull at the moment in 2019 because it's almost a joke in EV circles that everything is coming out in 2020. Oh, I like the look of the uh, new full electric Mini. When's that coming out? 2020. All right, then uh, what about the Tesla Model 3 base in the UK? Uh, about 2020. And, uh, all right then, uh, well, I'll leave that then. What about the Volkswagen ID concept? That looks a really good car. When's that coming out? Uh, about 2020. Basically, nearly everything is coming out next year. It's, it's become an, almost a joke. Now, because of this, we've kind of tripped into an iPhone type experience. Everything is kind of on pause to an extent, waiting for the next model. Now, I think it's, is it October when most iPhones are released? You know, each year, October, a new, new phone comes out. Let, let's say October. Now imagine that uh, your mom or dad or someone who's just not interested in phones and tech comes to you in September and says, I'm gonna buy a new phone and I want an iPhone. You'd probably say to them, well, hang on a minute, wait a month or so and get the new version. It's the same price as the old version is now, but you'll get a better phone, so just hang fire. Now by telling them to hold back, if it, as it were, you'd be right, it'd be the best thing to do. Wait a month for the same price, you get a better, better phone. This is kind of the same sort of situation we're in with EVs right now. So much is coming out from new manufacturers or refurbished versions of what already is out, you know, like a, a new Leaf, for example, that everyone's kind of on pause, on hold, and, and I am as well. If I didn't have this car or it suddenly miraculously disappeared, it got stolen, whatever, I would probably not buy a brand new EV this year. I would wait until something better, uh, and similar priced is coming out next year. Um, that's not to say that there's bad EVs out now or you know, if you bought something now you'd be disappointed. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that it's worth waiting. Now the first thing I kind of did is look at what's available right now. Again, cars you can actually get your hands on this year. Uh, now I'm going to sweep aside the 110, 20, 30 mile range EVs because like like the 30 kilowatt hour leaf I'm in now, it's first generation stuff, it's been surpassed, ranges have pretty much doubled now uh, in the current gen sort of models. So sweep them aside and it pretty much leaves us with, well, I'd say five choices in the current market. Uh, two of them I will get rid of immediately. And for me, these are the two best out of the bunch, the Kona and the E Nero. But they're both sold out completely in 2019. The entire allotment, all 1,000 of them for the corner, I think it's 1,000, maybe 1,500, has gone, of course. When you're only giving the UK 1,000 cars, they're gonna go like that. Right now, we're into we're nearly into April, and I think there's just over 200 corners registered in the UK. Anyway, it doesn't matter how good them cars are, or whether I recommend them or not, you can't get hold of them. So that kind of leaves us with three options for me. The i3, or i3s I guess, uh, the Renault Zoe, and of course the Nissan Leaf. 
the newer versions that are out now. This one, sadly, is no longer made. Now, the i3 uh, has, has had yet another relatively recent battery upgrade, so its range is... I won't say it's at the Kona Enero levels, but it is very good. They've taken the range extender away from Europe, I think, not just the UK, so you can no longer buy that, and that was a, that was a good, unique selling point for the car. I mean, it's probably, I think it's fair to say, the best engineered electric car out there. And the i3S is exactly as the i3 should have been from day one for me. It looks brilliant, does the i3S. It's almost the first electric hot hatch for me. It's lower, it's got a wider stance, wider tyres. looks really good. But the price of an i3S is, well, it, it, it's just, it's too much. It's really expensive. And that kind of puts me off. Maybe as a use proposition, it's not a bad idea. But brand new, you're talking beyond corner uh, e Nero levels, beyond even the base Model 3 when that eventually comes out. So I, I would hope they're going to reduce the price on it because as good as the i3 is, it can't kind of compare in range and capability terms as the cars I've just mentioned. So for me, I would probably not go for the i3. I'm not saying it's <laughs> it's a bad car again, I'm not saying you would be disappointed buying it, but I'm saying you'd be better off waiting to see what will what you can get next year, whether it's a newer i3 or, uh, or just a different, better car for the same sort of money. Then, of course, we've got the Renault Zoe, a car which is getting a bit long in the tooth now. The interior's, well, it's kind of like this one, really. It's, it's getting dated, it's a bit cheap, but the car's cheap. There are still significant discounts for the Renault Zoe, the 40 kilowatt hour uh, version. So it's a very good car with its faults, but it's a lot cheaper. I mean, a fair bit cheaper. I reckon you're probably looking at, ooh, 10, 15 grand cheaper than the i3. And that's with a fully battery-owned Zoe as well, not just the lease version. And of course, you can get even cheaper if you go for the lease version. Depends how long you're keeping the car, and that's for a different uh, video. But ultimately, the, uh, the the thing that compromises the Zoe is offset by its price, what you can get it for. But the new Zoe is coming out at the end of, the, I think it, well, for delivery, it'll be next year for me. In the UK, it'll be 2020. Maybe early on 2020, but that's when it's coming out, in my opinion. That's what all pointers are kind of pointing to. Uh, so you've got a new car coming out, and that's going to have a bigger range, of course, well into the 200s. CCS charging is likely. It'll be a, a facelift, or a, you know, be, it will look different. It will look newer. The interior will be better. I believe it's based on the, the, the newer Clio. It'll probably be the same list price, but there won't be the discounts that are on the current model, of course, the outgoing model. So it will cost you more money. I think that will be worth it. I also think that you will get that extra money at the end of the car. So if you keep a current Zoe for three years, it'll be worth X amount. If you get, wait a year, get the new Zoe and keep that three years, it will be worth that much more than the previous generation Zoe that ultimately probably won't cost you anything extra at all if that makes sense. You know, total cost of ownership now, not just the price you pay at the beginning. Although the price is tempting, I'm going to sweep the Zoe aside as well. So that kind of leaves us with the Leaf. Two versions of the Leaf, the 40 kilowatt uh, and the uh, the E Plus, which is I think a 64 kilowatt hour battery. I've had two of these, I've had a 24 and a 30, and I've, I've created a YouTube channel around it. It's a brilliant car for the price I paid which means its value to me is exceptionally high. It's so cheap to run, all that sort of stuff. Now, the new 40 kilowatt hour Leaf is basically the same car. It's a facelift of the car that came out in 2011 with a different dashboard. It will fit some people's usage plan. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad car by any means. I just think Nissan have just, they're static in EV technology and now they've been surpassed and they're still static. So that, that, that brushes aside the 40 kilowatt hour leaf for me. Its range is about 30, 40 miles less than the, the lower battery version of the corner, even though it's basically the same battery size. That shows the difference in what other manufacturers are, are now achieving to, to what Nissan have. So we've got the Leaf E Plus. Again, I, 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 I don't want one. I wouldn't recommend anyone to get one at the moment because same sort of situation. It's a car that, and I said this uh, in the last video, if you put ProPilot on that, it, its list price is above £40,000. 
40 grand for a car that came out in 2011 and it's just been refreshed and it's still no battery management. It's got the same battery cooling as a Renault Twizy. The fact that they've released a car with a list price that's a few hundred quid above 40 grand, which pushes it into the £350 a year car tax road fund license bracket. For those outside the UK, anything below 40 grand, uh, full electric car, there is no car tax. I'll call it car tax. There's no car tax, which is, was a yearly thing. If it's above £40,000, any car, not just an EV, but EVs are included in this, so Teslas and whatnot, then you pay £350 a year in car tax for uh, for the first five years, I think it is, or six, five or six years. So that adds you know, a few grand, basically, onto the price, ultimately. So why would you release a car that is just a few hundred quid above 40 grand? Why would you do that? It just doesn't make sense, and a lot of what Nissan are doing right now doesn't make sense and that puts me off the E plus it's it's way too expensive it should be what it, what these were what the 30 and the 24 were an affordable electric family car nearly 40 grand isn't that's more expensive than the Tesla Model 3 base will be when it's out I think that will be a mistake personally I don't think it's offering anything unique it's not offering good value anymore and for that reason alone among others I wouldn't get that either. This uh, you know, the PCP on this car ended a while back. It's ours. The car, you know, there's no finance. We can do what we want when we want with this car. There's nothing to expire. But we're keeping this car until the Model Three reservation, which I've got, finally turns up. That's probably maybe up to another year away for the version that I'm going to get. So I'm just keeping this one, and that is exactly what I would recommend anybody out there if you say well I've got a deal ending uh, a lease ending the current car I've got now is about to blow up the engines about to go whatever if you need a car this year right now then I still wouldn't recommend you to go for a new EV what I would recommend uh, what I would do personally what I am doing is keep the car you've got if that's a possibility whatever the car is I don't care if it's petrol or diesel or whatever keep it another year run it for that bit longer until the car you really want is out especially if some of them like the id concept have the range and the price that we hope they do so if you can't keep the car you've got now like i have i would recommend if you definitely want an ev or you just want something get a used ev that is the obvious choice for me a used zoe a used leaf a used i3 basically something which will tide you over for a year or so something that's easy to buy easy to finance a lot cheaper to buy of course and easy to replace in a year or so you would hardly lose any money for example this 30 kilo hour leaf i'm in right now hasn't dropped in price and i've been monitoring this very carefully since i did a video quite a long time ago it's still worth the same today as it was well over a year ago genuinely even though the car's a year older i've slapped another nearly twenty thousand miles on it i could get the same now as i could a year ago because used EV values are immensely strong right now there's not enough of them and of course supply and demand dictates that price goes up to back that up um, I think it was on Twitter Jonathan Portfield hello if you're watching from eco cars he has recently bought a car back from a customer he sold it to a year or two earlier I think it was a Citroen C0 or something like that he paid more to buy the car back then he sold it to them for a year or two back. <laughs> so his sell price a year or so ago was less than his trade-in price now. That just shows what's happened to the used EV market. It's gone up. Some cars have gone up. So if you do just need a car for a year or even two, a used EV is the best way of doing that. You will lose very little money in depreciation terms and then you will be in the position to buy the car you want and you'll have a much bigger choice 2020 there will be a lot more out there to buy the, the ones i've mentioned of course and then some now don't get me wrong you will almost certainly have to put your name down or even a deposit down on whatever car you want next year this year for example if you want uh, the new electric mini there opening the order books I believe or at least the reservations the, at the end of this year for delivery in 2020 so if you want one of those to avoid having the same thing happen that's happened to the coders they're all sold out 
uh, you're going to have to put your name down quickly if you want a corner, if you want a, a, an Enier roll. As soon as they open them order books again, put your name down on them. So you're going to end up having to do that definitely this year, as soon as you can. You need to be at the head of the queue. You need to be in the first week or two of, of the release of these orders. Otherwise, next year's allocation is going to be sold out. Pretty much any ice car, you know, in the family market certainly, you could walk into a dealership, say, I want that one, and within a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you will likely be driving out in your brand new car. With EVs, because of mm, well, ridiculously low production and, uh, well, high demand relative to that production, you're going to have to get in there early. It, it's changed. You need to plan ahead. The days of, ooh, my PCP runs out in a month. I better look for a new car. That's gone. <laughs> if uh, if you want a new car and it has to be an EV, you're going to have to start planning that purchase a year before your current car deal ends. It's uh, it's not great, but it's how it is. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a time of patience, I'm afraid. Uh, so what do you think? Has this changed your thoughts at all? Were you thinking of dipping your toes, as it were, into the EV market? A lot of people who uh, comment on the channel say, well, I've been watching these sort of videos like yours and other people's for a while and I do want an electric car, I just don't know if I'm ready for it. Well, now, for me, you've got a, a, a bit of time to, to stop and think about it. If you want to dip your toes in, get something used. doesn't matter how long you keep it, you'll probably get your money back in the next year. But remember, you're going to have to be on the ball in terms of putting your name down, putting a deposit down take a gamble and it's a small gamble it really is if you really want the full electric mini the second them order books open up go to your dealer or online or however they're going to do it and put your name down i really think that is the only way you're going to get one within the year of it coming out uh, by being one of the first to place the order so there we go right uh, please let me know what you think as usual on the comments and if you do want to chat hook up on uh, hook up did i just say hook up <laughs> oh dear, what am I talking I'm like a millennial. Ah. Anyway, if you want to chat, I'm on Twitter, at EVManUK. That's probably a better place to do it because there are so many comments on YouTube, I sometimes miss them. So, thank you as usual for watching and I will see you soon.